What's going on, y'all? This is John Alsace with Face Mask Fantasy. We got new up-to-date fantasy content coming your way every day on this channel. So if you have not subscribed already, then please hit that button. But before we get into our main topic for today, my co-host Nick Payne put in a ton of work to give you guys a free 2021 redraft draft kit available on our website, which can be found at facemaskpod.com. It's a great piece of content, something that other analysts might be charging you for but we're giving it to you for free so without further ado let's get into some fantasy talk and today i wanted to talk about tim tebow i know i know it's not somebody that i ever expected to be talking about especially from the tight end position but i haven't seen anybody really diagnose what this guy is expected to do as a tight end and if he's projected to be valuable in fantasy at any point in 2021 now he comes back into the league at 34 years old 6'3", 245 pounds. The Jags gave Tim Tebow no guaranteed money in his one-year deal, and his one-year deal is less than $1 million. So the lack of guaranteed money is a sign that he's going to have to fight to make the team. Now, we've seen players switch positions to tight end late in their careers and start thriving, like Darren Waller and Logan Thomas. And in the case of Logan Thomas, he switched from being a quarterback to a top-tier tight end, much like Tebow is attempting to do. Now, the difference between those two players and Tebow is both age and athleticism. Both Waller and Thomas were in their mid to late 20s when they broke out after the position change, and Tebow is once again 34. Both Thomas and Waller's athleticism is off the charts for tight ends, as they carry a 9.65 and a 9.05 RAS respectively. Both of them had an RAS above 9. Now, if you're unfamiliar with RAS, it stands for Relative Athletic Score, and it aggregates all combine and pro day measurables into one single number on a 10-point scale, and it does an outstanding job of identifying the best athletes in the given class. Now, the fact that both Thomas and Waller had an RAS above 9 is significant, and I'm going to list off a couple of the other tight ends in recent years that have an RAS above 9. Mike Gusecki, Vernon Davis, Noah Fant, Jimmy Graham, Kellen Winslow, Greg Olson, Todd Heap, Rob Gronkowski, Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Cameron, OJ Howard, Dallas Goddard, Jared Cook, Evan Ingram, Owen Daniels, Dennis Pitta, Tyler Eifert, David Njoku, Gary Barnage, Dustin Keller, Ben Watson. What do all these tight ends have in common? They all had RAS scores above nine for the tight end position, and they all at the very least have posted one top 10 season at one point in their career. Some of them in that list have gone on to become all-time greats at the position. Now Tebow, had he come into the league as a tight end at the age of 23 in 2010, his combine numbers would have put him at an 8.87 on the RAS scale, which is not bad to be honest. There are a couple tight ends who have posted tight end numbers with an RAS below 9. Recently, I can point to guys like Mark Andrews. But are we to believe that Tim Tebow at the age of 34 is just as athletic and spry as he was when he was 23? I don't think so. There's 11 years difference between his rookie season and now. Tim Tebow is already three years past the age apex for tight ends, as at the age of 31, we typically see non-elite tight ends decline at an alarming rate. Now, in his favor is the fact that he's coming into the league at a relatively fresh 34 years old, having not played any meaningful football in any capacity since 2012, and his last meaningful snaps were in 2011 when he started 11 out of 14 games and completed 126 passes for 1,700 yards and 12 touchdowns, while also rushing 122 times for an extra 660 yards on the ground and an extra six touchdowns. But that's passing and rushing, both things he won't be doing in 2021. That is, unless the Jacksonville Jaguars use Tim Tebow more similarly to how the New Orleans Saints have previously used Taysom Hill, this was rumored to be the case two months ago, as it was reported by ESPN's Diana Rossini. And I think that's all cute, but I mean, it seems like they'd be better served getting Trevor Lawrence the reps he deserves early in his career over giving a flame out quarterback from 10 years ago a chance at some gadget plays. I just I think that's stupid. So I'm of the belief that's all just reporter speak. By all accounts, he's being used as a traditional tight end in camp. So what does this all mean as far as Tim Tebow's projections for being a tight end in 2021 and beyond? 
Now his best comparables in terms of athleticism on playerprofile.com are Owen Daniels and Dennis Pitta. Both of those players have an RAS above nine. And I dug a little deeper into the reasons why. And it's strictly based off of the fact that Tim Tebow's an inch too short and he doesn't have long arms. That's why he was dinged for his RAS numbers and not put above that 9.0 threshold. Now, Owen Daniels and Dennis Pitta have both been low end tight end ones at points in their career. At 25 in 2007, Owen Daniels was the tight end eight. At 26 in 2008, he was the tight end six. And at 30 in 2012, he was the tight end eight. But by the age of 34, he was out of the league. And Dennis Pitta had one tight end one season at the age of 27 in 2012, in which he was tight end seven. But again, by age 34, he was also out of the league. So maybe if Tim Tebow had made this position switch late in his 20s, he would have had a shot at a tight end one season or two. Now I went looking for tight ends with a similar age profile, which is to say old. Now Jared Cook might be an apt comparable as at age 33, he was able to put up top 10 numbers with 504 yards and seven touchdowns with the Saints last season. But he's been playing in the NFL as a tight end since 2009, and he's one of those aforementioned tight ends with an RAS above nine. Now, Benjamin Watson was also a late bloomer at the tight end position, breaking out at age 35 with the Saints again, but he had an RAS above nine as well, and he'd been playing the position since 2004. So he had two things that Tebow doesn't have, the athleticism or the experience playing one of the toughest positions in the NFL. Now, just based off of what I mentioned above, I don't think that Tim Tebow has a shot at being a tight end one this season. But we haven't even mentioned the depth chart that he's walking into from a receiving perspective in Jacksonville. Right now, he's behind DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, Marvin Jones, and most likely Travis Etienne on the depth chart. He's the fifth receiving option on this team with a brand new QB, a brand new head coach, both rookies in the NFL. He has no prior experience as a receiving option in the NFL. He's 34, and while he might have had the athleticism at one point to make a run at a tight end finish or two in his career, I don't think he has it anymore, plain and simple. And it might be a cute story, but I'm not investing in him in fantasy. I'm not investing in him in any format. In season long, there are better, younger, more proven options with more projected target share and considerably more athleticism to be had just as late. In Dynasty, he's 34 years old. So even if he does buck the trend and give you that low end tight end one season this year, which is incredibly unlikely based off of everything that I just showed, based off of everything that I just dove into, you won't be able to sell him for peanuts as he'll be 35 next year. So I'm all the way out and I hope you are too. Don't believe the hype on this guy because the hype just might lose you a spot at the championship. Put your thoughts in the comment section below. My name is John Alsace. This is Face Mask Fantasy, bringing you new up-to-date fantasy content every day right here on this channel. So if you have not hit the subscribe button, please do. Thank you for listening and have a great day.